Hi, I'm the Rap Critic, and now that 2017 is finally over, we can do like we do with all years and look back with rose-tinted glasses at the Cherry Pick's best parts. So without further interruption, let's get into the top 10 best rap songs of 2017. And coming in at number 10 is a nice, mellow song to serve as the soundtrack to the absurdity that we've been regularly receiving this year. This is normal. It's normal now. From the concept album Brick Body Kids Still Daydream, Open My Geagle tells the story of an alternate post-apocalyptic world that, as a contrast to The Purge, has a day where everyone doesn't try to kill each other. One day without violence, can we get one day without fear? Can we get one day they don't try it? Just like one day the whole thing. And although it's supposed to be a future wasteland, the modern parallels are... When the king is a garbage person, I might want to lay down and die. Are pretty obvious. It's a nice somber into the world type jam, and I think more people should check it out. Now, this next title is uh, kind of weird. He's just trying to survive, but they saying that he's wrong. But the more I thought about it from a global perspective, the more it started to make sense. Because hip hop is the biggest musical genre right now, right? And the biggest face of hip hop is currently Kanye West, not just as a rapper, but as a pop star. His is a limited view into the thoughts and ideas of black men with the freedom to speak and be heard on such a universal scale. So his inspiring ideas and his most arrogant blunders get simulcast as a representation of black men to the wider audience. So it unfortunately becomes his responsibility for how black men are to be seen, which serves in some cases to reaffirm the uncontrollable, quote unquote, savage nature of black men through his actions. And as part of the kickback of confirming the racist suspicions of a society that's told to not respect black people in subtle ways throughout our culture, these stereotypes perpetuate themselves in the perception of all black people, reflecting back how black people are viewed and how black people view each other. But at the same time, the success in the story that Kanye also brings to his young listeners inspires them to succeed, believing that if Kanye West can make it out of this situation, so can I. And every day he puts his backpack on, his headphones in, and he plays that song. So God bless Kanye West and every other brother of color that's under stress. So when Merce tells you the stories of this kid who gets bullied everywhere he goes based on his impoverished surroundings, his encounter with the police at the end is all the more heartbreaking. He's running for his life. The fucked up thing is happens every other night. They know he ain't banging. They do it for entertainment. Let off a couple shots and they all start to chase him. This time the essays, ball head and tattoos. Mad cause he dating they cousin and he a black dude. He's running for his life. The fucked up thing is tonight is the black and white. And that might sound easy, but you see he's got a gun. You know he ain't trying to be on no tough shit, but every single night he was tired of getting fucked with. It's a sullen look at the state of affairs and representation and lack of opportunities in black neighborhoods. But to my sisters and my mom, just know I'm strong and I'm here. Are you braver than the dog? Okay, so for this next song, I need to say something. We got right here the son of Big Pun, a legend in hip hop, making a song condemning the type of abuse that his father, the legend, put him through. And we can't even get this band's lyrics on rap genius? What the hell, guys? Have we no respect for the culture? And yes, I know in interviews he said that the song is not specifically aimed at his father, but while I think a victim of abuse doesn't have to reveal any of the specifics of their abuse to the public, the video evidence of Big Pun pistol whipping his wife kind of speaks for itself. However, I, I can see how Chris might not want to get into the specifics of the details of the abuse he's witnessed. He's speaking out to the general behaviors and patterns of abuse that have occurred in Latino and black communities, which I think is respectable. You're worse. Than the bullies, the rapists, and pedophiles. It's you that we should trust to protect us and make us proud. Shout out to the mothers that tried to hold it steady, had a sprain wrist and black eyes and still would make spaghetti. And Man, I am not in a positive mood this year. Jeez, what's next on this list? A song about all the clothing companies that club baby seals? Oh, wait, no, no, this next one's positive. Trey served for the curves and got the money up. Call it Biggie Smalls, call it Biggie Smalls. Now, if you've heard the name Cupcake, you've probably associated it with more... Lick, 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 I lick, I wanna eat your dick. Uh, sensual material. But this song is actually about body positivity and how we, especially women, have been conditioned to never think our bodies are good enough. Instagram hoes shouldn't be our goals. Look past the post, she photoshopped her rose. Filter so bright, she don't think black clothes. That 30 inch weave is to cover her back rose. Straight up, fuck dude if you don't like small boobs. Manipulating your mind like you've been a lost fool. Think she big like a whale, the other things she too frail. Both gotta understand that they're gorgeous as hell. And she uses Biggie Smalls as an example of someone succeeding despite not looking conventionally attractive. The man called himself black and ugly as ever, and I'm pretty sure he had a lazy eye. But despite that, in a world of aesthetic barriers, he made his way in the industry, and so she uses his name as a catch-all reference for women of all sizes. Call it Biggie Smalls, call it Biggie Smalls, me and Big or Small, I love you all, love you. Big 
the small, I love you all. It was a bit of a surprise and handled the topic well in my eyes, and is a lot less divisive than other songs that have been made about this topic, so I think it's worth a listen. Now, 444 is on this list because... Jesus Christ. I said don't embarrass me instead of be mine. That was my proposal for us to go steady. I apologize to all the women whom I toyed with your emotion because I was emotionless. I stew over. What if you over my shit? This is the song that served as the apology letter to Beyonce for cheating on her. And oh my God, does it go hard. All throughout, he apologizes continually for not seeing how his actions were destroying his wife and hurting other women in his life with staggering honesty. And it's pretty timely that we're in an age of powerful men finally being called out for their bullshit. And this, I hope, is one of the seminal pieces of art that will reflect a turning tide of those powerful men responding with sincere apologies and alteration in character that will lead to being a better person to people and women specifically. Also, just the intensity of this vocal sample. It's a brilliant song and hopefully a marker for the change to come. Okay, so for this next one, there was a pretty controversial video for this song called I'm Not Racist by Joyner Lucas. A song that aimed to show the perspective of racial disagreements between black and white people. And I appreciate what it's doing, trying to open up the dialogue about race and music so we can lead to a resolution. My problem with it was, the white guy was way too racist, and the black guy was way too light on his rebuttal. See, with the way the white dude was talking, he's the type of guy who's not going to see eye to eye with a black guy. He calls the black dude the n-word several times, and isn't just addressing grievances, he's just listing off stereotypes that he was fed from TV. And all you care about is rapping and stunting and being ratchet, and that's the nigga within you. You gonna show us some respect, you gonna stand for this country, nigga! I'm not racist. See, I get the idea that he's saying racist things, but thinks he isn't. But it's plain to see that a guy saying the N-word that many times and that harshly is filled with hate. But I'm of the firm belief that that's not how most white people are about race. It's not just a bunch of poor rednecks that have racist views, which kind of turns it into a class thing like, oh, only those jobless white trailer trash are racist. No, all demographics of white people voted for Trump. Poor, middle class, and rich. But their justification isn't that they're just all hopping mad racists. It's because they're just uninformed about the plight of black America and other people's problems. Because our system is structured so that white people don't have to see the individuality of black people. And without a media that takes care to have more humanizing depictions of black people, white people are isolated at every turn of learning about the nature and history of how black people have been treated. And that leads to a majority of whites being more ignorant than out and out hateful. So I feel like a white southern guy shouting racial epithets is a short-sighted view of the wider issue. Because most white people that have racial biases, they're not all angry and shouty about it. Most of them think that their views of black people is logical and rational, based on what they assumed was good information. Black people are statistically more likely to jail, says this study. Well, without any other context, I'm forced to substitute any missing information that could provide context with the agenda that whoever told me that information is trying to sell me. Black people are in jail more? Well, because of what? Without any other context, a person not familiar with the lived experiences of black people will assume it must be because, well darn it, there's just something wrong with them. And the idea that it could be rooted in a bigger sociological problem is a harder and much more complicated conclusion to come to. And white people who don't have to live that experience can just fall back on the easier explanation. Because there's absolutely no consequence for not knowing black American history. And what I don't like about this song is how it equivocates the two perspectives through its narrative. The white guy gets a turn to talk, and then the black guy gets a turn to talk. But oh man, they just can't come to a conclusion. I guess we'll never know who's right, but we have to respect both opinions. But no, that that's wrong. Because the person with less experience with something is usually wrong about it compared to the person who is experienced. If the average person is talking to a rocket scientist about rocket science, most of what that average person is going to be thinking is going to be wrong. Because they just don't know the topic like the person who studies it has to. See, the argument here isn't, white guy thinks things, black guy thinks things, who's to say who's right? No, the dynamic is, white dude is uninformed about black history and their relation to America's institutional racism, so the black dude has to set it straight. Everything the white guy says are misconceptions or exaggerated stereotypes, but everything the black guy says is completely true, so to equate the two perspectives, as this video seems to do, and treat it like, oh man, we just can't come to a conclusion, but I'll still hug you though, is, in my view, missing the point. That said, I feel like this person's remix of the song does a better job of illustrating the issue. As soon as I say nigga, then everyone react, wanna swing at me and call me racist cause I ain't black. Yo, with all due respect, don't give a fuck how you feel. You don't live in my crib or pay for my meals. You got a whole lot of mouth and none of that. I like how he interrupts the verse, which we've already heard by this point, to basically make the point that 
This isn't about you. This is about our struggle. And if you want to be involved in the conversation about us, you have to be willing to listen. This whole damn country is run on hate, triangle and trade, turned into slaves and we only turn free because of Abe Lincoln. And I guess you could say he's decent, but he only did that shit for political reasons. And see, this is a huge point. Abe Lincoln didn't free the slaves because, oh gosh golly, it's just the right thing to do. Just as it is now, everything is all politics and black lives were seen as a bargaining chip for the country. Shit, the Emancipation Proclamation didn't even really free the slaves. It was more like, hey, since you decided to leave our union, you can't have slaves. But since you're not in the union, our words don't really hold any power over you right now. I guess we gotta think that public school education, the same places where you learn stereotypes like government assistance ain't used by whites, you fucking dickhead. Are you dumb? White folks use food stamps more than us. Like the way this dude just drops real facts and says fuck your feelings is just vindicating. So definitely check that one out. Ain't it funny how it happens? So it took me a long time to get over Danny Brown's voice. But with his latest album, Atrocity Exhibition, the rhymes were so tight, the flows were so unique, and the beats were so off-kilter yet perfectly frantic, I couldn't help but love it. This one in particular highlights his manic energy and revolves around the demented circus that is his life and how his addiction is tearing his mind apart, but is the reason why he's achieved this level of fame. I can sail honey to a bee, and a far time make trees take back their leaves. I glance with a hip-hop appraisal that wrist watch the rocks about the size of the cheap and crisp rocks mouth. Thing is, the whole song isn't just the bad. There are lines about how skilled he is and how much he has, but the music lends any positives a sinister backdrop that indicates that even the positive aspects are not wiping away the emotional strain of the bad. There's even a part of the video where he tells the audience to stop laughing at his pain, which, since it takes place in a dopey sitcom, causes the audience to laugh. They laugh so I try to seize them all. Funny how it happened, who I ever would imagine that joke's on you, but say no one laughing. I'm sorry, is it is it bad that I find this scene funny? And am I part of the problem? So yeah, I know the album for this one came out last year, but they didn't put out the music video for this one until 2017, so since I wasn't capable of putting it on the list for last year, I wanted to put it on this one. You know, sometimes I think they don't truly understand me, you know? They don't. So this song is about America reckoning with its racist past. Noticing a bit of a theme this year. And by the way, I'm not doing this on purpose. It really just felt like a lot of artists stepped up their socially conscious material and it's inspiring to me. Rappers have been making it clear that this conversation is not going away, so we need to address it. Finally. They disorganized my people, made this so alone. Still got the last names of our slave owners. Man. You know, that's something you don't think about until someone brings it up. Because the truth is, every African American in this country has the last name of someone who owned, raped, and murdered their ancestors. And that last name carries with it the legacy of psychological branding that was part of the stripping of culture as a way of forced assimilation into a Eurocentric worldview. We too worried to fit in while they've been benefiting. Every time you submit it, we all get to admit it. And it brings up the screw everyone else, I got mine mentality that runs rampant in America. And is part of how the division in black communities continues. Because the separation of culture and people was done on purpose and with malicious intent and it's going to take purpose and proper care and attention to the struggles of the community to fix that rift. If the other songs about racial inequality on this list were about the outward backlash against racial ignorance, this song is taking an inward look at our culture and issues and what we need to do to get back on track and I dig it. Now, this year, we had a legendary MC come out of the woodwork to craft a scathing condemnation of racism behind the badge. But yeah, I think this guy did it better. <laughs> I love how it takes the good cops to task for allowing despicably horrible behavior to continue. Clean cop, clean cop, rolling with that mean cop. Still trying to act proud as a peacock. Good cop, good cop, where is your dignity? Where's your empathy? Where is your sympathy? Bad cop asking you to lie in court. Send another young brother up north. Send another young sister off course. Why these motherfuckers chill on the golf course? Good cop, is that just a fantasy? Hell on that nigga. On that bitch. Truth be told, motherfuck the blue code. Honestly, it feels like a huge step up from the classic fuck the police. Because in that one, yes, it's important what the song in general did for the public discourse in hip hop, but on a lyric by lyric basis, a lot of the verses fell back on gangster posturing than any real issues with the police. This one doesn't just take a stand, it makes a point. 
NWA said fuck the police as a whole. Good cop, bad cop narrows the focus and says, yeah, you know those not all bad cop arguments people keep throwing around when a cop does something bad? Yeah, see, that doesn't matter because there's still a huge problem with abuse of force. And as well, if none of the good cops are doing anything about this systemic issue, then logically they're all complicit in a way. And I hope songs like this can give voice to these concerns and apply pressure to law enforcement to get things to change. Because, you know, I actually kind of like the idea of people being treated fairly and equally under the law and not just assuming and trusting that it must be fair just because people with guns and badges are around, right? So let's work towards that better future. Also, you cannot lie. This beat bangs hard as fuck. <laughs> It's inspired the way it interpolates the sounds of Fuck the Police with this new bombastic soul sample. So big shout out to the production team on that one alone. So what's up, man? Coolin', man. Chillin', chillin'. Yo, you know I had to call. You know why, right? Why? Because, yo, I never call to ask you to play something, right? Yeah. You know what I want to hear, right? What you want to hear? I want to hear that Kendrick joint. Kendrick again? Oh yeah, again and again. I got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. I don't mean this in any way as a play on words when I say this, but damn, this shit is incredible. The intensity, the imagery, the heart-pumpingly headstrong bravado. It's just insane all around. I know murder, conviction, burners, boosters, burglars, ballers, dead, redemption, scholars, fathers, dead with kids, and I wish I was fed. Forgiveness, yeah, 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 soldier's DNA. Oh my god, and yo, the switch up halfway through, the switch up halfway through? Bro, I don't even want to show it to you just in case you're one of those people who hasn't heard this song yet. Just go listen to it. Never have my eyes popped further out of my head than when this beat decided to give absolutely no fucks and gear switch mid-tempo to another more head-banging beat. I know this whole list has been like all social issues and shit, but even someone steeped in wanting social consciousness in their music can't deny the talent and presentation put on display here. There's no words I can say that'll give it justice other than damn. Seriously, go buy this album. But okay, that's my list. And if you've got a song that I'm sure I missed, put them in the comments section. Let's keep sharing good music with each other and try to have a good time in the new year. And be sure to check out the Going Off Podcast album reviews every Sundays, end of the year billboard streams every Wednesdays and Saturdays. Oh, and if you want to support the show, go check out my Patreon to get new episodes before everyone else for only $1 and go to my Redbubble to get some cool ass merch. Thank you so much for watching. And hey, here's to a new year's worth of good music. Peace.